Welcome back to Meticulous Mechanic. Last video, we got the camshafts out and the cam caps off. So the next job is to get the buckets off. And there's 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Those are intake. Here's exhaust. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So on all the forums I read, at least five or ten different ways to do this. People would say use a magnet here to suck those out, whereas this Yamaha valve lapper is actually a suction thing for um, lapping. So one guy made a good point. If you were using a magnet, it theoretically could magnetize the bucket, and it would attract metal shavings. That'd be the worst place to do it. Uh, but anyways, I found something that's going to work here. I'll show that to you. One tip is to cover the timing chain opening with a rag to prevent the valve pad from falling into the crankcase. And make a note of the position of each valve lifter and valve pad so they can be installed in the correct place. So I'm going to go ahead and put a rag in here. Keep stuff from falling in there. So I have my rag stuffed in here to keep stuff from falling down. I made sure it was tucked in tight here. So Nothing can fall there. And I was looking in these spark plug holes. I thought I better plug those two. I'm ignoring the intake valves for now. I'm just going to concentrate on the one, two, three, four, five, six exhaust valves. Those are the ones that are out of tolerance. So I was just going to set my buckets on these little pieces of paper, but I figured it'd be easy to knock it off and get it all messed up. So for cylinder one, I'm ignoring the intake and bent. Down here in the exhaust, I label this 1-L for left, cylinder 1-R for right, cylinder 2 left, 2 right, cylinder 3 left, 3 right. And then I made bags, 1L, 1R, 2L, 2R, and 3L, 3R. That should keep everything organized for me. I'm going to start with cylinder 3 left. So instead of using a magnet, and I don't want to buy that valve lapper right now. This is just one of those hooks with a suction cup that you hang ornaments on your window with. And I just take this metal tab off. So I'm just going to lightly wipe this oil off here. So one advantage to the magnet would be there's a little shim under here that conceivably could fall off the back side of this. But I actually did one off camera and it didn't. So I'm just pushing down here and hopefully this suction grabs it. Pull straight up. Good. It's coming nice and easy. I'm going to keep my eye out for that shim. The first one actually came out letters. There we go. This one was fighting me a little bit. I can see the shim inside here. Let's take this over to the bench. So I've got my 3L bag ready to go. This little suction cup just comes off. And then underneath is the shim right in there. There it is, it just fell out. This one's actually labeled it says 184. Let me wipe my fingers off. There you can see the 184 now. That side was up in. And you can see this little wear mark on this side. The little wear mark was where it was sitting on this little round part here. In fact, that little hole is where the shim goes in. So the bucket, basically a cylinder. You can see a little raised portion in there where the shim sits on. It would be nice to have a tray where you could put these in, but right now I'm just going to use this bag. That'll work for now. So one down, five to go. I'm not going to uh, film all that. That'll be exactly a, just like I just did. And then the next step is to find the new shims to, basically you want the cup to go down farther. So this cup was up too high. And that's why that clearance 
was too small. So if we put a thinner shim on it, it'll allow this to go down farther. So on the next video, I'm going to run through that math on how to put a thinner shim in.